That's the beautiful thing about art, is art empowers people to think and come up with their own meaning. And when you empower an audience and they find meaning in their own way, that's when you're winning. This is where it all begins, so say goodbye to all your fears, all your doubts. This is where they die. This is where we come to win, we come to fly. This is where we make our dreams come to life. Welcome to Innovation City. Welcome to Innovation City, a podcast featuring the innovators, disruptors, and creatives who are making things happen today. My name is Michael Johnson. I'm here with my co-host, Tyler Kelly, and we are at Venture Cafe St. Louis tonight. Venture Cafe being the number one largest weekly gathering of entrepreneurs anywhere. So I'm really excited today because we have Louis Couture's with us. Hey, anywhere, not just St. Louis, anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. Global, big Global. things, big things. Shout out Venture Cafe. So this is going to be a cool show. Uh, Lou, Louis Couture's. When St. Louis's hottest hip hop artist, when they want a music video, they call Big Louie. That's right. And, Big Louie, uh, Louie the Shooter, <laughs> Mike Roth, Louis Couture's. And you know, I love that you've done some pretty amazing stuff. Like number one, Masterminds Molly Mula video. Yep, that one went viral. Mm -hmm. And um, I like like the way that you do like the quick edits, the slow mos, how you bring it all together. It's really cutting edge, like really in your face. And this is stuff that's coming from the ground up from right. St. Louis, but it's starting to hit a national audience. And so when we think of what Big Louie's doing making waves on the video scene. Right. So welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you, Tyler and Michael, for having me here at Venture Cafe. Um, I've been here several times, and I think it's really important uh, for the city of St. Louis uh, what's occurring here for entrepreneurs, creatives, and just people who, like you all mentioned, who are looking to be disruptors in the scene. So I think it's important for people to get together, network, talk, discuss ideas, and push things forward. That's certainly something that I'm trying to do in my music video. You know, um, I've been shooting music videos in St. Louis for over seven years now. Got over 70 music videos in my belt. I've worked with 25, art, 25 plus artists, and it's all St. Louis people. That is really my goal. Um, I'm trying to be a resource for people here to understand what we have to offer, not just locally to one another, but also, like you mentioned, uh, on a national level. In addition to doing the music videos, I also host a monthly web series. It's called The 314. And what that focuses on, it's an easily digestible watch in order to see uh, art events, uh, artists, music, what's coming out that people may not know about. Because one of the things that people mention to me regularly is, is that they want to be interested, but they don't know where to go. They don't know who are the resources, where can I watch and digest something where I know um, like who to pay attention to. And I want to be a voice in that conversation and say, hey, here's people who I like. And I'm not just playing favorites, putting my friends out there. A lot of the people who I mentioned on the 314 are just at, uh, artists who I admire who I actually haven't met before. Because I try to stay in tune with the scene, pay attention, keep my ear low to the ground and understand, you know, who's just making good music. That's really what drives what I do. Um, I don't really have an agenda out there. As a video artist, I'm more concerned about um, what music moves me and how can I use my skills and my talents that I've developed through my career in order to help push these people forward. Because at the end of the day, video is just essentially a marketing tool, a way to show, a music video that is, to, a way to show people um, who you are and what you represent. Because it's, it's one thing to just have your music out there, but if people can put a face or an image to it, it's really a way to build a, a sustaining fan base. And that's what I'm interested in right now, is creating a platform and a foundation for sustainable art here in St. Louis. Because I know a lot of people feel like this is a small market, you know, there's a lot of Chicago envy. Many people I know ha have left St. Louis in opportunities in other uh, cities. And I wanna show people that it can be done here. And um, if you're passionate about St. Louis like I am, um, you know, I'm on your side and I wanna see us win together and be able to, to make people in our hometown and across the states uh, pay attention to what we're doing. Cause I, I think it's important. I think there's a tremendous amount 
of talented and just underrated individuals in general, myself included. I'm not trying to be super cocky, but um, I, I want people to see uh, what we have to offer. And there's, a, there's a, this big movement going on that people are concerned about, and it's local, everything local, right? Farm to table restaurants, that's the trend in, in uh, the restaurant industry right now. You think about um, small businesses, no one wants to shop at big box retailers anymore. They, they have local business uh, weekend uh, once a year where you know they uh, are pushing people to, to get involved with people who are making things here. And uh, you don't see that same momentum with music. Why? Why are we still listening to the radio? Why are we still listening uh, to major record companies telling us what music to listen to? Because I bet if you ask most people, they turn on the radio and they, and they don't like it or they haven't found something that's for them. Why not turn to local music? So I'm trying to push this listen local movement where you know you can go to shows here in St. Louis for five bucks, see a great quality concert, and you can meet and interact with the artist. Music has never been more accessible. So, you know, um, give St. Louis artists a chance. I'm here to, to showcase that through my skill um, as a video artist. But like I said, I, I love hip hop. I've always loved it. And um, I'm just fortunate to connect with so many artists here in town that trust me with my vision and bringing their music to life through video. So yeah. thank, thank you again for um, having me here. Yeah. So I have a ton of questions about all those things you talked about. But first, I'm just, I'm curious about the name Louis Coutures. How did you come up with that name? What's the, what's the story? All right, well, so first, um, I'll, I'm gonna try and keep this short. So first I was trying to, uh, I was doing a production company called Rotting Peach Pictures. And I was doing the short film circuit here in town and trying to get something into festivals. And in order to fund that, because that's expensive, I needed money. And one of my friends knew a rapper and he was like, they always need videos, they'll pay you. And I'm like, this is perfect. I can shoot a rap video every once in a while, make some money on the side, use that money to film my festival runs. Well, once I started shooting rap music videos, I started getting a lot of people interested in what I was doing. And I had a lot more people who were wanting to shoot videos with me. And then I really, uh, not only that, I was getting a lot of local press on the videos too. And so um, I kind of fell in love with the scene that way. So initially what was kind of like a, just an entrepreneurial idea really turned into a passion and a love for me. And now I do all my music videos pro bono. There is no, under very few circumstances do people pay for any of my music videos. I call it the golden bargain, which is that I shoot a music video for you and essentially with your permission, I get to do whatever I want because I'm, I've always been a very creative person I have that creative energy and I need to express it regularly. And I, I found video well over a decade ago and that's the way that I, I feel I express myself the best. And so I'm um, very fortunate that people trust me enough to lend their music to me so that I can create something for them. And um, I needed a really a, a name that better represented that because I didn't want my short film production company to represent this new thing that I was passionate about. So I've always been a, a history buff of St. Louis. I just am in love with learning more about St. Louis and why things they, they are the way they are here. And in doing some of that research, uh, when I was looking for a new name, I wanted something that was a person. So people felt like I, it was more personal. I didn't want just like an idea or a, a random name. And uh, I also wanted something that sounded kind of expensive and maybe hard to pronounce, something exotic. Uh, because that was kind of the image that I wanted to represent. And so uh, Louis Coutures is the 14th Louis of France. He was a monarch and ruled one of the longest monarchs of, longest running monarchs of France. And the arts flourished under his reign. Uh, there was just a, from everything, from music to literature to paintings, um, some of the most spectacular buildings that still stand today in France in France and Paris were built during his reign. And uh, the French missionaries, when they first started coming over from France to America to uh, convert the indigenous people to Christianity, uh, they named this whole area after him. Um, and people nowadays remember the Louisiana Purchase when uh, the French sold the land to America. That This whole area was named after uh, Louis Couture. So I thought that was an appropriate name to kind of represent me, something that I felt like I could own 
he's dead. He can't get mad at me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Actually, um, his signature is my logo, and I actually have it tattooed on me. So uh, I'm that serious about it. So, yeah, that's pretty much how Louis Couture's came about. Wow. So I'm, I'm also really interested in how, how did you get into film in general? Like, what's that story? This is a fun story, and I'm going to try and keep it short, too. So <laughs> I, went to, I went to school uh, for uh, management information systems, which is essentially IT, but with a business background. And when I was in school, um, I went to University of Tulsa in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they had closed circuit TV there for everybody who lived on campus. And what was running um, on those closed circuit TVs were uh, university channels. And they were always on and they never had commercials because they were produced by the university. And one of the channels was called the uh, Film Studies Channel. And they had a film studies program at University of Tulsa. And what they would do is, is they would uh, show all of the student shorts uh, from, for multiple years on that channel nonstop. And uh, my friends and I, when you're bored as a college student, that's what we would do. We would just watch the film studies program. And um, some, and they were just, I don't mean to hate on these people, but they were just bad student films. Just really awkward, funny, ridiculous student films. And so we all had like our favorite student film directors and actors and student films, and we came to memorize them because we watched the channel so much. And it would always open with like, um, there was like one of five different songs they would play. And they were all like, one was like a jazzy song, one was like a hip hop song. And then it would say the semester and year the film was made. And then it would say who it was made by. And all our friends were there, we would memorize them and it would say like fall 2005. And then we'd all start yelling out the films that we liked from fall 2005. <laughs> and then it would come up with the director's name and we'd get even more excited because he's like our favorite director. And so we're watching that, and um, after a while, I was like, I think I can do better than them. And um, not as any sort of competition thing, but just, um, I don't know, I was just really attracted to, to producing video after that, uh, but I didn't want to be a film study major. So I started a student organization on campus for people who are interested in film but didn't want to be film studies majors because filmmaking is way more than just directing, right? Um, you have to write. Um, you have to edit, there's sound design, there's lighting design, there's all these different elements. And I felt like the film studies program at the time was a little more focused on kind of like directing. And they would work with people who were studying um, acting in the theater program, but they weren't really tapping any of those other resources. So I wanted to kind of bring people together who may be interested in creating films but may not want to be directors. So, um, I started that organization and we would produce uh, about three films a semester, enter them in local competitions, produce, uh, uh, there was always a year uh, video race in Tulsa where people got together and they had a weekend to make a video. Um, St. Louis has one, it's called the uh, 48 Hour Film Project. I've yeah. competed in that as well. So that's really what began like my video craze back then. That's awesome. So did you end up on the student film channel? No, because I wasn't a film <laughs> studies major. I wasn't a film studies major. But, um, and some of these people, like, it was so sad. I remember the, the server died that had everything on it and our, our wow. final semester. And I, I, I was friends, uh, well, I knew the, the, the man who ran it because he was in the communications department. I had a couple classes with him that I just took as like general block classes because I was so interested in it. And they didn't have any of it backed up, so they lost all that stuff. So all of it. And I remember away. going on Facebook and emailing these people, many of whom had already graduated, and being like, do you all have those films? Because I really just loved watching them. They were just so outlandish and wild and fun to watch. And, yeah, I mean, I'm sure my mom's listening, and, and that's where all of her, you know, some of her <laughs> money went because she helped with my tuition. But, yeah, that's what we did during college. We watched the Film Studies Channel. So... So fast forward to you started doing hip hop videos just to make money to, to film what was your passion at the time. Right. How, how did that change to hip hop videos being your passion? Like, what was that journey like? I was always a fan of hip hop from, from the get go. The first album I ever bought, it was on cassette tape. It was uh, TLC's Crazy Sexy Cool. And I loved uh, Lisa Left Eye Lopez. And she was the rapper of TLC. And um, I remember listening to uh, Tupac and DMX um, back when Pac was still alive. And DMX was just, you know, one of the hottest street artists out there. 
And um, it was always in my blood from the very beginning when I was growing up in the 90s. And then um, when I met people here in St. Louis who were doing hip hop, um, I just, they're just really good people. And uh, the more I worked with them, the more I got to know them, because when you're out there filming events for them, um, back then all the rage was a lot of people wanted mini documentaries because people wanted EPKs, which are electronic press kits. Yeah. People were looking at TI and uh, Jeezy and Yo Gotti, and they all had like these mini documentaries about them. So a lot of people were coming to me doing mini documentaries. So I like met a lot of these people and their families and where they grew up and stuff. And uh, just to know people on a personal level like that and then hear their music, it changes things for you. you know, earlier I was talking about how St. Louis music or local music in general is more accessible because you, you can kind of get to know these people. And once you, you know the stories about where the music comes from, it's even more powerful. And so, um, yeah, I was just very inspired by their life journeys and their approach to music and how their passion for music kind of mimicked my passion for video. And just being a fan of, of hip hop since my early days and when I first got interested in music, it just really made me want to go to bat for our hip hop scene uh, nonstop. In addition to just a lot of people were sleeping on and still sleep on St. Louis music. You know, everybody knows Nelly, everybody knows St. Lunatics, and that's it. I bet most people, even people in St. Louis nowadays, can't name any other rapper. And, and I'm not including like Chingy and Jaquan and everybody like that. But out, out, outside of that generation of St. Louis rapper, y'all really can't name anybody else and so i want to be part of that conversation to to say hey here's here's some people you should be paying attention to and this is music that you know if you like these type of artists you're gonna like this type of music and not only that you know a lot of these people perform multiple times per year it's only five bucks you can go meet them after the show how cool is that so and um so yeah i mean just the hip-hop scene in general here is super super vibrant there's just a lot of amazing and beautiful people doing great work all the time and i'm uh very happy to be a part of that and i want to keep doing that uh for as long as i can so we're big fans of the scene as well for somebody that like you said is not familiar with what's happening in st louis right now who are some people they should know so first off everybody got to recognize smino uh smino is from here but he moved up to chicago and um he's blowing up right now you know what i'm saying uh he had a project out last year called black swan that was just terrific um he recently did uh a remix of one of his songs with t-pain he's got millions of views on youtube uh he's touring the world right now i believe he's uh over in new zealand and south korea selling out every venue in new zealand and south korea so um he is just very very gifted musician first off he plays drums too he started off playing drums and was in choir and then used those talents and kind of morphed them into into rapping so uh he had his first headlining tour last year and at his first show he like broke his ankle and he was playing on crutches the rest of the show or the rest of his tour dates which, which was i thought was super cool and he's super st louis so he was always wearing air force ones and he got li uh, little baby Air Force Ones to put on his crutches, no. which is, how cool is that? So, I mean, you gotta, rec you gotta recognize Smino uh, first and foremost. And then after that, it kind of just depends on what type of hip hop you're into, because there's so many sub, sub genres right now. Uh, Riffront Times this week, their cover stories about LA Fours. LA Fours is a, a street artist from St. Louis. He just got out of prison and um, they play his music all the time on Hot 104.1. He's got a song, it's called Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum, basketball player from Chaminade, now plays for the Celtics, probably gonna be Rookie of the Year in NBA. So, um, LA, and not only that, for 314 Day, which for people who aren't from St. Louis, 314 is our area code, and uh, people go crazy on 314 Day, celebrating all things St. Louis. Yeah. And uh, he did he did a show at uh, Chaffetz Arena. They had six thousand people in there. And it was his first show that he performed in in over two years because uh, he was jammed up. So I think LA Fours is one of those younger generation of uh, a street artists that a lot of people are connecting with. And uh, I really uh, respect what he's doing. Uh, someone who I really like. Uh, this is a guy that I've been working with since he was fifteen. 
uh, from the very beginning. His name's Jay Demol, J D E M U L. Um, he just has a natural talent for for rap, and uh, he represents a new generation of what I like to call St. Louis blues. A lot of people don't mess with St. Louis music because we're not marketing correctly to people. If you think of uh, West Coast hip hop, you think of East Coast hip hop, you think of Southern hip hop. You guys already know in your minds you can hear those iconic sounds that represent those regions. St. Louis really don't have a sound like that. And so when you're trying to get people interested in something that hasn't been well defined, it's hard. It's hard to describe, so it's hard to get people interested. So uh, something about our heritage that I think we've always had is the St. Louis blues. We have a very, very rich blues heritage being uh, a river town, a number of very talented blues musicians came out of here. And you think of the legacy of the blues and how it grew up through rock and roll through Chuck Berry. And I, I think now the modern interpretation of that is hip hop. And I think Jada Maul is somebody who really embeds that t- personal touch in his songwriting uh, that is reminiscent of the blues. So he's somebody that uh, anybody who listens to him, if you like hip hop, you're going to like him. I've, uh, there's big things in store for him right now that I can't really that I can't really talk about, but that dude I think will will definitely be somebody that every hopefully everybody knows within the next couple of years. So that's hot. Um, you mentioned that St. Louis doesn't do a good job of marketing itself, and you know it makes me think that just in general you could create the best piece of art, but if no one sees it, if no one can appreciate it, if it if they're not aware of it then you just created something nice. Like, you're not changing the world. So talk to me about, like... I mean, that you are literally describing my life. <laughs> I have uh, my best music videos got, you know, maybe 800 to 1,200 views on YouTube. And, and these are things that I could sit down and talk to you about for an hour. All the decisions that I made about this music video, the concept, the editing, everything. You know, I'm very thorough when I'm creating something, uh, which is why I refer to myself as a video artist and not a director because uh, the decisions that I make and how I'm trying to impact the viewer uh, or the audience, uh, at, in my mind, is more reminiscent about how an artist approaches artwork. I'm trying to evoke an emotion, a sensation out of you, um, but I'm leaving enough leeway there that it's up to your own interpretation. I've had people dissect music videos that I've done, and their interpretation of them is completely different than what I intended and they're not wrong. And that's the beautiful thing about art is art empowers people to think and come up with their own meaning. And when you empower an audience and they find meaning in their own way, that's when you're winning. And so, but yeah, you're right. Um, that That's the biggest hurdle that we, we face right now is, is trying to connect the dots. And um, I'm still figuring that out right now. I, have, I haven't figured it out. I've, I've certainly learned a lot in the last 70, uh, seven years, and I've gotten better at doing it, but we're, we're really trying to create something that is um, that will make people wanna listen and get the exposure so that people know uh, where, where to turn to. And like I said, that's one of the reasons why I created the 314, my web series, is to be a voice, to be a resource. Yeah, so what's the, what's the end goal or the impact that you hope to have? Let's say you have Resources aren't a aren't a question. Your reach isn't a question. What's the impact that you want to have with what you do? I, I think what is a sustainable arts platform. We need to we need to uh, to create some sort of entity that empowers St. Louis artists, where they can feel like um, if they're able to network and and get and and just essentially spread the wealth with people. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, because if you look at a lot of these people. Uh, some of the people who I'm working with, they don't come from good areas and music is their release and they think it's, you know, their, their way out. And I think if we could, if I could help be part of some sort of, not necessarily like a mentorship program, but just um, have an outlet or outreach where people could come in and um, I don't know whether it'd be like a studio. I haven't, I haven't, th- I haven't thought about the end goal. I'm, I'm, I'm so focused and narrow minded in my vision and pushing just one person to the top that uh, because I feel like with the amount of work I put in and the network creation or the the network connections I've made I know that if one person makes it there's a good chance that we all make it because you know like I said I've I've shot over 70 music videos with 25 different artists so if if one of them pops 
and they go and you see it on my channel, you sub to my channel, you start looking through the music, oh my God, you might find a treasure trove of other artists that you may enjoy as well. You know what I'm saying? So um, there's someone like, uh, I don't know if y'all know who uh, Cole Bennett is. Uh, Cole Bennett is a videographer uh, from Chicago and he works with a lot of Chicago artists who, who blew who blew up. Yeah. And now he's essentially uh, A&R for the record industry. They looking at him and his channel and seeing who the, who who he's breaking as the next artist. And now I don't want to throw no shade at Cole Bennett, but I've been doing the same type of things longer than he has. Um, he just happened to be in the right place at the right moment. Some of, some of this stuff is is just you know um, is getting lucky with it. In addition to being good and driven and passionate, so uh, part of me is 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 hoping to get lucky. And like I said, I'm I'm really out here tr- trying to learn the process, connect the dots make the connections to help push a lot of these people. And thankfully, some of the people who I have been working with, I have been able to connect them in places where they're able to get with people who will help develop them. But I would like to see that move in-house in St. Louis so that we don't feel like we have to rely on outside sources with connections in order to push us out. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I think the beautiful thing that I see in – and I. It's almost weird to say like the hip hop community because when we talk about like Venture Cafe and the things that we explore, it's entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and a hip an artist, any kind of artist is an entrepreneur as much as any other entrepreneur. You do, I do everything myself. You know what I'm saying? You're your own marketing team. You're your own manager. Uh, you're your own content manager. You 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 do everything. I've designed my own website. I direct edit everything. I write press releases for all my stuff that I send out to people, um, um, you know, you, sometimes you have to like essentially write articles for, for writers and send them out to them in order to the, for them to get your stuff. I'm trying to make yeah. it as easy as possible for people who are interested uh, to, to help spread the word. Yeah. yeah. What do you feel like your biggest challenge is right now? Like I said, it's, it's certainly exposure. It's, it's getting, uh, not necessarily getting people to care, but just getting people aware, um, getting, getting the word out there saying, Hey, you know, um, like I said, with this whole listen local movement that I'm trying to start is, is that if you're passionate about local things and, and really supporting and building your community, you have to include music in that conversation. And uh, in the process, you're going to discover some great music because I'm talking about hip hop, but I know a variety of other genres of music in St. Louis where people are equally as talented and gifted and whatever style of music that you like to listen to because I just, uh, m- music is one of those things where it's just, it's kind of part of human nature, the way that uh, the, despite all of the differences that we have with one another, I think music is one of those commonalities as humans. Yeah. We all enjoy music uh, for different situations, whether it be like a car ride or you're at home decompressing or at your work trying to get something done or you're trying to have a good time with your friends and turn up. Uh, mu- music is is like a universal language for for humans, and so um, I would like to challenge people to to get out, you can go to local shows, check me out. You know, if you don't if you don't like hip hop or what I'm doing, uh, you can check out like uh, the uh, Rock Paper podcast. Uh, Shane over there is doing great stuff um, in kind of the rock alternative scene. Um, KDHX, of course, the only independent local radio station. Go to 88.1, um, listen to that instead of whatever you listen to in your car, and you'll get turned on to a lot of um, interesting local music, and it, it really makes a difference. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if, if you go to a local show and stuff. And, then t- and of course, like um, tell your friends and stuff, too. You know, it, it's, Social media is everywhere. It's part of our lives now. And... Uh, it's a good way for people, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Tyler, to like go viral. You know what I'm saying? And um, one of the one of the problems I have is is people want to fit in with things, and they don't necessarily support things that aren't popular. It's kind of that that high school paradigm where you, you got to be the cool kid, and if you're not the cool kid, people don't care as much. But once you're the cool kid, everyone cares, and they want to get to know you. And at that point, it doesn't matter. Do you know what I'm saying? Like. If, if we have an artist here who's already doing well that everyone knows, we don't need you to know them. We need to build this from the ground up for people who people don't know yet, but they're making 
great, interesting things, and they're passionate, and uh, they're driven, and uh, those are the type of people who I'd like to see supported, and those are the type of people who I work with. You know, when I'm shooting music videos, um, I always try to shoot, not always, but I, I, I don't work with the same people. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to work with people whose music moves me, and it could be somebody who has 10 plays on SoundCloud. I don't look at that and say, you only got 10 plays on SoundCloud. It's not helping me working with you because nobody knows you. Why would I shoot a music video for you? Do you know what I'm saying? That doesn't. That thought has never entered my head. It's like, this is great music and people need to hear it. That's the mentality and the approach that I like to take when deciding with whom I'd like to work with. Uh, whereas other people, it's, it's kind of like this, echo, not an echo chamber, but you build off of one another. You know what I'm saying? For like YouTube content creators, what they're saying is, go and work with other channels to, so that people are aware of each other's audiences. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you have 100,000 subscribers and somebody else is doing something else and they have 100,000 subscribers, you all collaborate on a video and post it on both your channels or have a guest come over. And so it drives traffic from those other people who may not know about that. And um, it's a bit of a popularity contest. It certainly works, but that's not what I'm trying to do with my music videos. I'm not going out there and saying, yo, who's the hottest right person out right now and let me jump on that and try to push a music video out with them simply because they're put on i'm more concerned about letting i've always been quality first quality over quantity uh i was hoping that the quality of the music would drive and the quality of the video would drive the success of the music and success of the video but that's that's not the case it's a it's a lot a lot of groundwork you got to do and that's why i'm out here now doing things um like this podcast because i never would have done this three or four years ago um i was more behind the scenes type dude um i i like changed all my logos and stuff were of louis couture's himself and <laughs> my uh my girlfriend who's a photographer jessica j page uh she said to me no one knows who that old white dude is who cares? And she was totally right. And um, so I, I've ditched that and I've made it a point to get out here. I'm already at everybody's events. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to two different events tonight. I'm going to an art show tonight and a local concert tonight. And um, it's I like to get out there and support uh, the people who I believe in. And if, we get in, if people are interested in this music, go out in there and support them. Like I said, these local shows... Um, they don't they don't cost they don't cost very much. I myself I throw a local music showcase every September that's called Apollo. We get 150 people out there. It's totally free. Um, I tap people um, who I respect and I think they're great performers and get them to come out and throw a show. The first one that we had, um, I had the Knuckles out there. Where if people don't know who the Knuckles are, learn the Knuckles. That's another band. That's uh, shout out uh, Rockwell Knuckles and Aloha Mishu. It's a man and a woman kind of like rap group. And she sings, he raps, and it's fantastic. They're going to be at, uh, every year Riverfront Times does their showcase where they pick different acts to come and perform. I think that costs like 15 bucks, and you get to see 100 different bands perform. Just go to that, and the Knuckles will be there and see their stuff because they are fun. They throw confetti, and they are just such good live performers. Um, last year I had... Um, Tanina Saputo with me. Um, she is not a rapper, but she plays upright bass and electric guitar. Uh, she's touring in Europe right now, and she has an album coming out April 6th that's called Black Angel, and she is incredible. She has uh, She's at the Grandel uh, every month with uh, a dine and music uh, compilation. So you can go to the Grandel, get, that's a great place to eat too. Go there, get a meal, watch Tanina Saputo. She will yeah. blow you away. She's crazy good. We've heard of Tanita. She's incredibly talented. Incredible. And like I said, I do this every year in September for free. You don't have to pay nothing. Just show up. I pick five people. Uh, like I said, they're all great performers, and they put on a showcase, and it's a great way to to meet people, uh, hear great music, and have a great time in St. Louis. Because I, I really don't think cost should be a, a barrier to people. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. for people like me, it, it can be a little bit overwhelming. You go to like uh, like two shows every week, and it's five bucks. So that kind of adds up over time. But just for, for casual people who are look, looking to get out there, just you know, go to the Firebird, go to Blank Space, go to 2720. Check out these local venues. They always have shows and um, get in tune with what's going on and, and spread that and, and bring your friends. And 
if we if we build this in St. Louis, uh, we can make other people pay attention to us. That's not the only objective, of course. Um, obviously, it's cooler if St. Louis people are on board first, because you know I don't like people like picking up the newspaper and you're like, who's the LA fours? Do you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like that's a dude who's been working really hard, and if you're in the hip hop scene in St. Louis, everybody knows who he is. So it's it's nice to have that homegrown support, and we, you can you can make a living off of that, and we can use that and leverage that uh, to get more national coverage here. So, ideal world five years from now, listen local takes off. People are actually paying attention to the local scene. What's that look like? I mean, for me, it it would be a dream come true. And I know I would cry because um, I have worked tirelessly at this. I've spent an incredible amount of money um, investing in people and opportunities, trying to to, to push our scene and uh, just to push great music, great people. And I think that um, it would be, like as I mentioned earlier, a sustainable arts platform for us. We could really control and dictate a lot of conversations. We can bring and network with other local St. Louis companies, get them on board. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these, uh, some of these local art shows and stuff, companies like Urban Chestnut are already doing that, uh, giving away uh, a beer, free giveaways, things like that. I think that's a great way for local com- uh, uh, companies to invest and get uh, connected, but it would it would just it would it would make St. Louis music relevant, and we could use that power to to bridge across not just music but these other entrepreneurial things. Um, uh, trying to trying to think what other opportunities would be out there for 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 other companies like me, me, St. Louis media companies. You know, what I'm saying if we had artists here who are who are well known you could use them in some of your uh in some of their videos to promote slam to promote whatever urban chestnut you could get um those people on board to to network and build and um i think i think it would be really really cool if you look at like what's going on i think like the blueprint is in chicago chicago has so many quality artists that they keep pumping out non-stop uh, Saba just released a project today that's crazy good. Um, and there's a number of other, uh, Raven Lene, who I was talking to you guys about, she's coming to St. Louis. She's a Chicago artist. They really work in, with one another and uh, they are able to tour the country because of that, because um, they have an, enough name recognition because um, they're able to build each other up. Just think if you if you have... Uh, one St. Louis artist who's who's really well known, and they start working with other St. Louis artists. And if you're a fan of that artist, and you hear the other person who's featured on your song or whatever, you look them up and get interested and become a fan of them. It's like a uh, a snowball effect. And I, I think it's a it's a great way for us to to build those connections so that we lift each other up when the moment comes. And in five years, if that moment were to come, then we can use that power to dictate the conversation and bring in more people outside of music and and really uh, create something where we can continue that cycle. A lot of people hate Nelly in St. Louis because he rose to, he's like, I think he's literally the number one hip hop selling artist of all time because he was able to go across race and genre and all that stuff. And um, he really didn't help anybody out aside from his cousins. Do you know what I'm saying? He had the St. Lunatics on board, but you never really saw him create anything in St. Louis as a launching platform for more artists. A lot of people are mad at him because of that because they said, man, if you if you just would have built that platform here for us where you're either directly or indirectly, like maybe behind the scenes, helping other people in St. Louis who are talented, who have some local next." Uh, recognition get to the next level then you really build that sustainable life cycle of we're pumping people out of here who all are really talented instead of boom we just got one bright star that's supernovas and it's over do you know what i'm saying so i I would like to see because by all means we have the talent we have the drive people people are i'm ready to go you know what i'm saying like um there are so many ideas that i would like to realize visually that I'm just not able to accomplish right now because they cost 
tens of thousands of dollars to do. And um, I'm not willing to spend that amount of money on a vision that might get 800 to 1200 views. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I, but even with limited resources, I'm still able to do very creative, inventive things. And everyone always says with less resources, you're typically more creative. You get more inventive. That's certainly true. I describe myself kind of more as like a, a street artist run and gun type thing. I'm not about big over the top set pieces. A lot of the, th now I tailor my music videos to the artist. I'm not trying to say, this is what my music video looks like for everybody. A mastermind music video is a mastermind music video. In all his videos that I've shot for him all feel like mastermind music videos. And then you go watch a Jada Mall music video and they're different. They don't look like Jada, like mastermind music videos. They feel like a Jada Mall music video. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying to listen to these people's music, feel inspired by it, and use that inspiration to create it for those individual people. Um, not out here just dictating how things should go. But, but I need those resources too because I would like to shoot a lot cooler things for people than I can right now if, if we had some sort of, you know, if I got to put a Beats pod thing in the first 10 seconds of my music video. I don't know if you see that. All the music <laughs> videos nowadays, it's like some dude, uh, they show the Beats headphones. And first <laughs> product thing. placement. Yep. Yeah. Product placement. I'll do that too, and I'll, I'll try to do it a little more inventive than just showing it on the dashboard <laughs> of, a, of a car or something, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it would, it would be cool uh, to do those things. But, I, but we've all learned to work within our means. I'm sure yeah. these artists would love to record um, in, in most everybody's literally in closets, hanging up quilts, recording on laptops, learning these things. I was never trained at what I did. I went on YouTube and read books. Same thing with all these people I'm talking about. Nobody went to school for any of this stuff. Uh, it's just things that we fell in love with. And when you fall in love with something, it's never worked. When I'm out there trying to learn about something, I'm not stressing about it saying, this is boring or I don't like this. It's because I want to learn because I, I truly enjoy doing it. And same thing with um, most, I would say all the artists I work with, these are self-trained people um, who, who have found a natural knack for something and um, think that's what most people should do in life. You know what I'm saying? If, if I'm trying to inspire somebody, if you're, if you're looking at me for inspiration, I always try to tell people, find what you're good at. Everybody wants to be something that they think they're good at. My parents named me because they thought it was a good name for a second baseman. And I love baseball and I tried to be good at baseball and I was just never very good at baseball. And I could spend my whole life trying to be that second baseman, but I'll never be him because there's somebody who's just has a natural talent for second base and they'll be better at it me and they probably won't work as hard as me. So I was fortunate enough to find video at a fairly early age where I could grow and develop that and I know that's what I'm good at. So, you know, discover, learn things that you're good at and find out what that one or a couple things are and invest all your energy in them and don't stop. Just keep going because, yeah. you know, even though I'm, I don't have the exposure right now that I would like to have, um, it does not discourage me in the least bit about getting out there and trying because, you know, I know at the end of the day that when I've created something beautiful that I'm super, super proud of, I've done it for myself and I've done it for that artist. And as long as we both are satisfied, that's all I want. Mike, it's been a pleasure having you. Where can people find you? What's the best place to find your work and find you online? Just go to my website because my website is just links to all, everything. So it's uh, louiscatours.org. You might have to spell that for people. Yeah, you ain't going to put in the info box? We're going to we put it in the show notes for sure. Notes, but. Yeah, just, just look <laughs> yeah, at the show notes. Or it'll be, yeah, if you're just watching this on video, notes, it'll be uh, yeah, Just go to the website. And the best thing you can do is once you go to the website, go to YouTube and subscribe. Because um, one thing I've learned through doing YouTube is you have to be a regular content creator. I, I'm, I'm more concerned about quality, but I still have to kind of churn things out. You know what I'm saying? So if you if you subscribe to me, um, every two weeks you'll get a video from me. It'll either be the 314 where I tell you things of music you should pay attention to or events you can go to, uh, or it'll be a, a brand new music video. And all the music videos, it's original music, original video concepts, and I think they're super cool. I hope, um, you know, if you check it out, you hope they're super cool too. And then, you know, after that, maybe you'll discover some, some new music you've never heard of before and then I get to meet you at a show. So that'd be super tight. There you go. Make sure you visit the website, Louis Couture's. We'll put that in the show notes. 
Uh, Louis, thank you for uh, being with us today. This has been fun. Uh, it has been education fun. on the scene. I appreciate y'all doing this too because these these are the type of conversations and the things we need to do to push everybody forward. I've been looking at the guest list y'all doing and seeing the people who you've had even here today with me, and these are all quality interesting people who have the same passion about what I do in their respective fields. And I know y'all have the same passion too for this podcast and what y'all doing. And um, it's just, uh, it's a fun time to be in St. Louis. Um, if you're not from St. Louis, wherever you're from, uh, you're from, you know, um, thank you for listening uh, with me. And thank you again for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. For more episodes, visit innovationcity.co. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. And if you're in St. Louis, visit us on a Thursday night. Details at vincafstl.org. And connect with us on social at We Are Slam or at Venture Cafe STL. Thanks for listening. This is where it all begins. So say goodbye to all your fears, all your doubts. This is where they